Hello and welcome to Advanced Path Ranger. Uh, Ranger is a path that is defined by the traditional um, roleplay game Ranger. Uh, essentially, if you know what Dungeons and Dragons Rangers are, then you pretty much know what Advanced Path Ranger is. It's really a matter of adapting a traditional roleplay class into a pathway. And I think that the way that this went about, they went about this is actually really sick and really neat. And they get to do some very, very strong and very unique things, um, which is super cool. Uh, so we'll read through it real quick, uh, and just in case you're like brand new to, if because some people enter this uh, LARPing sphere through like just they don't know anything about role playing games, they don't know anything about classes, so my reference earlier probably wouldn't have helped those individuals so we're gonna go through ranger and essentially these are bow wielding and specifically bow wielding uh forest forestry men or forestry women or forestry non-binaries uh that typically have an animal companion with them uh they're very in tune to nature most of the time and they are known for marking and tracking and hunting down things so they're uh they're a woodsman type of archetype so we'll go through the uh paragraph here the hunt is a proud tradition and contest of survival carefully tracking your prey through the woods with one goal kill or be killed no matter the prey with preparation and the element of surprise the ranger prevails a simple hunt for a boar to feed a family is all well and good but they are just as adept at hunting down an army of undead terrorizing a town. Once a ranger picks a mark, it's only a matter of time. Oh boy, that felt bad to the bone. Uh, requirement, adept focus, metamagic familiar, and tracking too. Uh, so, I actually took the time to look up uh, both of these unique requirements. So tracking and tracking two, uh, which is tracking one is the prerequisite to tracking two, are advanced scholarly skills. So you'll be able to find them, let's see here, under experience, uh, under early characters, scholarly skills. You'll be able to find them under this page. Uh, they essentially let you track, tracking one lets you find uh, footsteps, footmarks, track, track marks, essentially. Um, and then, like, spend research to interact with it. And tracking, too, lets you ask specific, unique questions, like, how many footsteps is this? How many? It's a more advanced version of tracking. That's all it is. Um, which are very unique and are recent, relatively recent. Um, when I, before COVID, they weren't a skill, and currently now they are a skill. So it happened somewhere in that period of time where I wasn't playing. But it's a unique skill that interacts with research. Note that you do not have to have research to learn those skills. Uh, familiar is a meta magic that is specifically open to every race regardless of their magic use, which means that a Nolophidian can become a ranger. Uh, it's relevant. The meta magic familiar is 5 build, and tracking 1 is 3, and tracking 2 is 5, which is a total of 8. So across all of the prerequisites here... Uh, is 13 build, and then you have to have adept, which puts you at a minimum of, let's see, 50 lower weapon mastery plus the rogue focus plus another 13. So you're actually the prerequisites to become a ranger is relatively low. Um, you're looking at sub 100 build technically, uh, if you don't count like your starting racial build and stuff. You're looking at less than a total of 100 earned build to be able to start ranger. Um, I would recommend getting a lot more adept before you go down, and like understanding how to use adept before you go down a, a full advanced path. But this is a strong archetype that a lot of people want to play with. You know, like this is a traditional archetype that's found in a lot of role playing games. So some people might just be dead set on like, I want to be a ranger. And if that's the case, then this is the pathway for you. So we're going to jump into the skills. They have a. Uh, two to one body ratio to build so for every two build you get one body in this case 10 to 5 and we're going to jump right on the first skill ranger becomes more potent while using a bow okay 
You gain affinity bow plus two damage, and bows are undisarmable. That is amazing, okay? Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, affinity, so there's typically bonuses that some racials will get. So elves have, which elf is going to come up a lot here because I feel that the elf race in general, uh, generic elf interacts the best with ranger. It's really the uh, primo race. Now that has nothing to do with uh, other races being able to play this. So um, you can totally, it's totally viable because what you're really talking about is that like elves get like plus one more damage to bows. That's it. There's no other additional things. So there's some races that might get a bonus to bows, but an affinity is specifically really good. Having bows be undisarmable is super relevant. Um, also, this is very unique. Character may have a buckler strapped to their arm while wielding a bow. This may be used to parry, but may not be used for physical defense with bow in the same hand. Okay. So, the thing about bows and the way that bows work is that we do not have an actual arrow launching system, quote-unquote. So, you do not use a actual bow to shoot a foam arrow, so to speak, right? As uh, you would see in other kind of buffer LARPs like Dagger here or Belagarth or other more traditional LARPs. Uh, instead you uh, have a packet with a tag on it that says this is an arrow. Uh, and packets are used across a bunch of different... They're used for psionics, they're used for magic, they're used to represent unnatural abilities. And in this case, they're also used to represent bows, or to represent the arrows of bows. Uh, so essentially, you aim your bow as if you were normally doing it, you pull back, and then you get to throw and make the call, or you get to make the call and then throw the packet. Um, we're going to go a little bit in depth here about how bows work, because it's important to understand, because this is, honestly, this is the first time bows are coming up. So, the bow weapon cannot be used to block. It is a, uh, the bow, re physical representation of a bow is a literal traditional shaped bow, and it has to be strung. Okay? Um... I've seen spirit bows that are, like, boffery built, and they, like, represent bows, kind of. But uh, you can bring, like, a real long bow or a short bow, um, and you can use that as the physical representation of it because bows are not allowed to be used to block um, specifically. You cannot block with bows. When you're holding a bow in your hand, you are vulnerable to melee attack uh, short, and you can't block with it. It also doesn't count as a weapon in your hand for the purposes of using defensive skills such as parry or deflect, okay? Uh, so, being able to have a buckler strapped to their arm while wielding a bow, which means, say you're the, a traditional right-handed person, and you have a bow in your left hand, and you're throwing packets with your right, in your left hand you may have a buckler strapped on that same left hand. Uh, and this, again... This doesn't let you block with that. This does not let you block with that buckler, okay? But it now functions as a. As you need a shield or a weapon in a, in a given hand to be able to use defensive skills. So this allow having that buckler again doesn't let you actually physically block the weapon strikes. If they hit your buckler, they're still hitting you. But it does allow the skill usage of parry, specifically parry. This doesn't say you get to use deflect. This doesn't get to be used with... This just says this may be used to parry. Um, which I would imagine applies to upper parries as well. So auto parry and um, magic parry as well. I would assume. Do not quote me on that. Okay. So you get an undisarmable bow. You get plus two damage. And you get uh, to be able to use skills while carrying a bow. That's really good. Um, that's really awesome. Uh, bows have a base... Sorry, so... And then there's also a, another unique distinction. When you're using a bow, you are technically using three unique things. So you are you have your bow fizz rep, which is like your actual bow. Okay? That cannot be altered slash augmented. It is just simply the thing that's quote-unquote launching the projectile, right? So sharpening that bow as if you would, like, sharpen a sword, that's not possible. Uh, the quiver is a, essentially a pouch 
Um, and there's specific rules for building it. You'll find those rules uh, underneath out-of-game information, weapon and packet construction guidelines. Uh, it's essentially a green pouch, I think specifically, with a green tied, uh, a 12-inch green tied ribbon around it. Okay, that's what I believe the requirements are. And then within that pouch are a bunch of spell packets that have a... And most spell packets are generic spell packets. They're a piece of cloth with bird seed and a rubber band. Tie, so arrows are a production tag that says this is an arrow tag. And they are wrapped typically around that rubber band uh, to represent that it's specifically an arrow. Um, this is unique in terms of packet usage. Uh, and they're also a production item, like weaponsmiths can make arrows, okay? And the damage is determined by your... Uh, it's determined by a multiple of factors. So when you get to apply damages to things, the base damage... So if you go to, again, weapon packet construction guidelines, we have a chart with every viable weapon uh, that you can use and it has its like base damage laid out, you'll find that bow is not on there. It's actually arrow slash bolt, because crossbows are also allowed. Uh, arrow slash bolt, and it's base five piercing. Uh, the chart says damage, but the verbiage call when you're throwing a arrow is five piercing, which is the base damage. You can increase it. So with this skill, you would be throwing... Uh, six seven you'd be throwing seven piercing and then if you were an elf you would be throwing eight piercing okay uh just for an example and it's based off of the arrow as opposed to the actual bow so when it comes to using crafting and applying crafting skills to bows uh they are relatively ineffective in doing that there are crafting things that you can do with quivers i know that and there are some unique skills here that interact with quivers uh you may only carry what in the base rule you may only carry one quiver with you uh to use from your uh to use for your arrows and a oh a quiver specifically only holds up to 20 arrows you cannot hold more than 20 arrows in your quiver okay sorry that was a tangent we're at 12 minutes and we're gonna <laughs> and we've only covered one skill but it's important for you to understand how bows work because they're a relatively niche part of the LARP. And they just recently got reworked um, within that same COVID era or a little bit before COVID happened. Um, and they're not very commonly used, but when they are, they typically go Ranger. Um, and it's a unique it's a unique part of the game. And uh, there's, a, there's a space for it, which is awesome. So yeah, the reason... Why I wanted to cover that is because in terms of using a regular bow, getting it to be undisarmable to damage and also being able to wear a buckler to be able to use it as a skill defense is awesome. Okay, this is a great skill for 10 build. Uh, and it really it starts to make using a bow more traditionally viable. Uh, all right. So uh, familiar here bonded familiar is the skill and familiars are additionally they're a quote-unquote character that an, another player can play for you to represent your companion and it's it is represented by an individual companion or by an individual so you have to have a buddy that's willing to play your familiar and familiars are cool and depending on what you did they like did this whole system for familiars it used to be a lot more casual but like they have like a whole system for it now so if you're interested in specifically the familiar stuff and your companion, I would highly recommend going to experienced characters, meta magic, and finding familiar there because it's like a whole page. It is a whole page of a skill. Super cool skill. <clears throat> so we'll go into bonded familiar. Your familiars are immune to your arrows. All familiars get an additional pick on the non-magic familiar chart. So when you when you make a familiar, you get to like pick off of a chart. So for non-magic skill chart, uh, you gain a plus three damage, which is amazing, by the way. This is probably really good. 
You gain plus three damage with a bow against tar a target your bonded familiars are engaging with in melee combat. So that's neat. So you you get to uh, you get an additional plus three. So if you're swinging seven, if you're throwing seven piercing, you become you, you jump up to ten piercing. If you're an elf, this is eight and eleven respectively, which is cool. Good skill. Arsenal, uh, which plus three is the standard bless spell. So you're getting a bless every time you're fighting the same thing, which is cool. Arsenal, 15 build. Ranger may carry three more quivers. Period. So you get to be running around with four quivers, four sacks worth of uh, arrows, which makes, which means that you can throw more than 20 packets at a time, essentially, without having to pick stuff up, which is really good. It allows viability in a long-term situation is what this allows for people using bows so that's really solid uh there's you're not going to find anything else like this in the in the in the entirety of the rulebook i'm fairly certain uh the hunt rangers can track for free you track for free your bonded familiar automatically counts as assisting when you track an enemy so that means you you get tracking one uh without spending research so it's like five you have to spend like five research to like to track initially um so i imagine this reduces that to zero and then uh you also get ad like advantage essentially because your familiar is helping you as well this also is a gain plus 10 damage versus a chosen enemy this is a typically common skill in the ranger archetype and getting 10 damage in this in against an enemy of choice is awesome this enemy type is chosen at the time of learning and must be tracked by logistics marshal so undead dragons goblinoids uh i would go out of my way to say generic undead is probably a good pick there are lots of undead adventures and i would say the vast majority of events you you will fight or encounter uh, undead at some point uh whether it's a traditional zombie or a demi lich <laughs> you know uh undead is a safe bet there goblinoids is also pretty viable etc um by the time that you're reaching ranger and reaching this skill you'll have a good idea you'll have played at least like let's say four or five events somewhere in there uh probably more than by the time you reach the skill so you'll have an idea of what you want to pick by the time you get around to this skill so that's cool now we're getting into some sweet skills trick shot okay this does exactly what you want it to do the ranger may fire the following special arrows by paying the appropriate costs. In addition, the ranger can use all weapon mastery, adept, and ranger shots with thrown and improvised thrown weapons, with the exception of volley. This means that your throwing daggers is pretty cool. This this applies to throwing daggers, and throwing daggers are a unique uh, weapon. Base one, but you get to throw a little dagger at people, which is cool. Um, people previously... I remember one guy came in and he was a runesmith, and it's really easy to get like a cheap, uh, like 500 runic lava damage, fucking like a, a cheap. You can get like a 100 runic damage lava elemental thing on a dagger, and then you just throw the dagger and make the runic call, and you just do 100 damage for like a little dagger. And he had like a a band a bandolier. He had like 10 of them strapped to his chest and they were all ruined up. So in, when he went into combat, even though he was a production user, he would like pull them up and like whoo, throw them and he would he would do he would did it did work, man. It was cool. Um but it's neat that thrown weapons apply here because you get to use these things uh on those as well, which is actually really strong. Uh being able to apply all weapon mastery to add up skills uh, with thrown and improvised thrown weapons is a really, with the exception of volley, and we'll get to volley, uh, is super good. So stun arrow, throw stunning blow per the weapon mastery skill. Uh, so stunning blow is really good. I uh, a lot of people will tell you that it's really good. And the requirement on stunning blow, it's a basic weapon mastery skill, uh, is that you have to hit them in the chest or the torso. Essentially, you have to hit them in the torso of your body. Uh, I do not know if this torso requirement is applied when it's thrown. I would hope and assume that it is, because being able to throw a stunning blow is very strong, especially at the cost of three adept. Really good. Uh, physical inflict pin, two adept. 
uh, there's a spell called pin, and it essentially uh, pins somebody to the ground. It, it pins one of their feet to the ground, so they can't, like, quote-unquote run away. Uh, it can be resisted with two strength. Uh, so you have to know what you're targeting and hope that and like know that they don't have strength before you try and throw something like this. But uh, pretty solid, and it's not magical. Uh, so throwing a physical non-magical pin is pretty good for especially when you're talking about two adepts. Like these two are really good. Uh, knockback arrow ten adept. Okay, this is the big. This is the heavy hitter. Knockback plus ten strength. Uh, you take. So falling damage and being thrown x amount of distance damage is one body per foot. So with 10 strength, you knock them back 100 feet. Uh, 10 times uh, uh, strength to feet ratio is uh, 10 type 10 to 1, or is 10 to 10. So you do if it's 10 strength, it's 100 feet. So one strength would be 10 feet. They're knocked back to 100 feet, and as a result of it, they take 100 body damage, which is awesome. This acts similar to Shoulder Block, but is in no way modified by the user's strength. So if you've seen the Shoulder Block skill, which is on Elder uh, Minotaur, if you wanted to go look at that, uh, they get to apply whatever strength they have. So they say Shoulder Block, and then whatever strength their character has, they get to say after that. This explicitly says knockback. 10 strength so regardless of what strength you have it's always going to be 10 which is honestly this is a very strong ability this is uh 10 strength is a lot of strength so not very many people are going to be able to just avoid this <clears throat> which is awesome uh hitting somebody with this is scary and should be respected all right so that was trick shot this is probably what your go-to bread and butter you're probably going to be doing a lot of these uh, on top of, like, traditional damage. Uh, Hunter's Mark. So this is very this is very enigmatic of the D&D &D class. Uh, Rangers target a specific opponent. So if you've seen uh, Paladin Judgment, uh, this is similar. The Ranger may, tar may mark a target by pointing at the target and declaring Hunter's Mark. So the way that Paladins, they have Judgment where they get to point at somebody and go, like, I judge you. And then they do extra stuff against that guy. So this is similar. Uh, they say Hunter's Mark and they point at a guy and they make sure and like it's known that that's their mark. For combat duration, you get to activate effects, unique effects against the marked opponent. This effect cannot be used more than once in a combat and once it drops, has a one hour cooldown period before another mark can be placed. This skill may be purchased three times. So across the course of a... Weekend event, you only have three Hunter's Marks if you've purchased it three times. Fury, for three Adepts, you may strike any Weapon Mastery or Adept skill or Ranger shot against the Mark three times and pay only the cost twice. You must say Fury after the third use of the skill. Uh, so you pay three Adept, and then you get to Fury something. So if you, f if you went uh, Piercing Slay, Piercing Slay, Piercing Slay, and you just assume that's ten cost... You pay, uh, you fury and piercing slay, piercing slay, piercing slay, fury. You now pay ten weapon mastery for the first one, ten weapon mastery for the second one. So you're at twenty weapon mastery, and then three adept for the use of the fury, as opposed to thirty weapon mastery. So you're trading ten weapon mastery there for three adept. So you're saving yourself seven weapon mastery essentially, or seven, uh, seven ish to 10-ish Weapon Mastery, uh, which is unique. And the being able to apply this liberally to Weapon Mastery, any Weapon Mastery add up skill or the Ranger shots, amazing. Uh, specifically only against the Mark. Uh, if any shots strike a target besides the Mark, you must pay for the third use of the skill instead of activating the Fury. It's important to know. Pounce, free. This allows you to strike for double damage. This will double any numerical skill that is added as well. Can only be used once per opponent. So Pounce is uh, common in a couple of the races as a racial skill. It just allows you to swing whatever you're going to swing for double, and you can apply skill, numerical skill to that. So you take your weapon mastery, and you want to add 100 damage to it. So you go 100 piercing, and then Pounce lets you double it for free. So without a call, too. So you what you do is you just you would pay the cost for 100, and then you would call... 200 piercing and throw it at the guy so that's 
pretty good, and being able to do this for free is really good. Uh, dodge! Holy crap! This is an amazing skill. When you're playing, when you're fighting against your hunter's mark, you may dodge for 15 adept. Okay, this is insane. Dodge is typically 10 rogue. Being able to dodge for adept in almost like in any in the the hypothetical the hypothetical situation you're in is that you're fighting your hunter's mark specifically and it's a one hour cooldown so you're not going to get to use this a whole lot so traditionally i would assume that you would want to hunter's mark a you wouldn't want to hunter's mark a basic guy okay you wouldn't want to hunter's mark a little chaff unit or a dinky elemental npc you want to throw this at a mini boss or a regular style boss type of opponent because dodging multiple times for exclusively adept when you're an adept pathway is nuts okay this is really good uh against appropriate effects from the mark target per the rogue skill just you get a dodge for 15 adept nuts absolutely busted because again you can enter ranger really quickly in terms of the build count so be you probably don't have rogue um you probably entered into it pretty early and you don't have like a whole second pool to be able to dodge with with rogue so being able to dodge out of your respective pool here is amazing anytime you get to do dodge for something other than rogue it's pretty good typically uh trap shot ranger gains special arrow attacks to prevent foes movement this is insanely good okay um Physical inflict slow five add up target cannot run for combat duration. Uh, inflict slow is a spell. Uh, fit you're getting to call physical inflict slow. So instead of incantation inflict slow spell, you're saying physical inflict slow, and you're throwing a packet. Really good. So this is just more. This is just more special shots that you get to throw. Physical inflict web per the web spell, but non magical ten add up. Web is 8 strength to be able to resist that. Okay, it's 8 strength. This is good. Okay, you're for 10 adept, you are throwing a physical inflict web. That is good. Okay, it's just that's just really strong. A lot of things are going to either dodge that in uh, or or take it, which is scary for that. Like, that's a very good skill. This is pretty sweet uh volley five adept empty a full quiver of arrows when used fire your next arrow in a 10 inch radius from the impact weapon mastery and adept skills may be used in conjunction with this but their cost is double when applied in a radius and no reductions can apply okay so this means you can just you can put vorpal slay on a radius okay so this is a similar wordage to the swing for massive radius uh, slay or the massive radius slay that you would see at the end of Elder Reaver. Okay, so this has the same similar, it has a similar wordage. Uh, so when, if you wanted to Vorpal Slay, which is 10 adept, uh, you would empty a whole quiver, which you have four of, by the way, okay? So you essentially dump one of your quivers, and then you would take one of those arrows, and then you would make this call and throw an amazing shot like this. Um, now, it's interesting that regardless of what you call, you have to dump a quiver. So, hypothetically, you wouldn't want to use this for a simple strike. You would want to use this for a, a big fight ender. So, like, Vorpal Slay is a pretty good pick here. Um, but regular Slay is also just as good. And uh, if you wanted to just add 200 damage, like you just wanted to add Weapon Mastery, doing 200 damage, and it's piercing. Oh, well, we didn't cover that. Piercing ignores armor. Okay, so it goes straight to body, to stand standardly so essentially if you wanted to apply a the master critical blow which i believe is 200 damage or it might be 100 damage either way it's still a ton of body damage that you're potentially doing in a 10 foot radius okay i imagine that when you do this you're going to need to probably call a hold of some kind <laughs> just to be honest um but so for example if your base damage with a bow is five piercing you could spend five adepts 
aim your bow skyward and fire volley uh volley five piercing ten radius ten foot radius the same ranger could instead fire volley 105 piercing 10 foot radius so this is like uh adding 100 weapon mastery yeah by using your weapon mastery skill or spending 20 adept to do vorpal slay oh because you're doubling the skill so typically it's four i imagine to use a to do 100 damage so you're doubling it volley vorpal slay 10 foot radius is a nuts and scary call and you would be Obviously, you have to be very careful to make sure that you don't hit your buddies. But uh, spending 20 adept in addition to the initial 5. Uh, so you'd be spending 25 adept to do that without any reductions. Which you cannot apply reductions when you're doing this. Which is very fair. Uh, this skill cannot be used with any Hunter's Mark ability as it does not target a specific being. may only be used with bow crossbow. So this does mean that you can't use your throwing daggers with specifically these ones. Uh, so you should be using a bow if you're a ranger. But it do, it's cool that you get to use, like, throwing daggers, too. Not specifically for this skill, though. Which, it, it would be totally busted if I had my little dinky dagger and I got to throw 10-foot radius things with my daggers. That would be bad. It would not be fair. So, yeah. Really good skill. Uh, so that was Trap Shot. So Trap Shot and Trick Shot are honestly your bread and butter. You need to digest these and understand these fully. Because uh, these are really good skills. I would say I would evaluate these as very strong uh, woodland concealment ranger can skirt the astral plane in the woods okay so concealment is a so X concealment is a common theme across multiple different archetypes or characters or races uh, so there's like underground concealment there's uh, water concealment there's etc concealment uh, woodland is typically the best one because we are a bunch of larpers that are in woods so there's a lot of wooded areas most of the time so being able to become invisible to the naked eye skirting astral while nearby while within the woods uh it would not work at the base of a lone standing tree yet like you have to be in like a relatively forested area to make sure uh essentially you get to be invisible but you still make noise uh, this is a racial ability for some races, so instead you gain outdoor concealment, which is hidden behind uh, you having that skill. So I couldn't tell you what it does, but if you can think of woodland concealment and then outdoor concealment, pretty sure you can figure out what it does. Uh, but yeah, this is really dope. Uh, you get the best conceal By being a ranger, you get the best concealment out of the whole lot in my opinion this and underground concealment are like tied for the best concealments in my opinion uh really good skill and the cookie make it rain rangers quivers can hold more arrows all of your quivers jump from 20 to 25 which is across four quivers that's an extra that's essentially an extra quivers worth that's 20 quiver that's 20 arrows so that's pretty dope and uh uniquely being able to add another plus five to a given quiver is awesome. This is a good cookie too. Because this is exactly what you want to be doing when you're a ranger. So uh, ranger actually surprised me. Um, I read this a long time ago when it came out. And I didn't think much of it at the time. But going over this now. And refreshing myself how bow works. And looking at all the skills together. This is a... I would, I have con I would consider playing this. Um, bows... Are a tough way are a tough kind of weapon to use in shifted lands just because of the way that it's set up. But uh, this kind this was fully developed with the understanding of that, and it's and it minimizes the downsides of using a bow and gives you amazing upsides. This is trick shot and trap shot are insane, and then hunter's mark is occasionally busted. Okay, being able to dodge for rogue against a boss is insane. Like, being a ranger with, like, a hundred adept, it would be freaking nuts, okay? And then, it's unique because familiar only really has, like, one unique skill with it. Uh, one or two, I get, like, that count. Yeah, like, you're familiar. So, it's it doesn't require or, necess uh, or necessitate that your familiar is there to still be doing ranger things. Which means that you're not out of luck with, like, half your skills or something if your familiar didn't happen to be at that event. Like, the guy that was playing your familiar... 
uh, because familiars require a specific individual. So it, I can't have a bear buddy, and then that's played by Jeff, and then I can't have Sam play that same bear buddy. It has to be Jeff. That's how that the familiars rule works. So being able to... Now, you could get a second familiar and do it that way. But uh, being able to p do this without the necessity of having your familiar is also really good. Um, I, I would have assumed that the familiars would play a, a much more important role, but I'm actually very happy that they take a backseat role here uh, in terms of the skills. Because just having a familiar around is amazing by itself, honestly. Um, familiars are pretty good and pretty nuts, so... Yeah, that was Ranger. Really surprised me, honestly. Uh, this is definitely a double take for me personally, but Ranger's pretty solid. Uh, being able to do trick shot and trap shot are kind of nuts. Not gonna lie. Kind of actually crazy nuts. Super good. Alright, so that was Ranger. We're gonna move on to Sentinel, which is one of the older pathways, and it's a really strong pathway, so we're gonna find out. Uh, thank you for your time. Peace.